since 1989, the Northridge earthquake. That was the largest aftershock since the original earthquake at 431 this morning. It creates a kind of a fear that is uh, hard to handle. Who knows what could happen? Please help those people down there, they're trapped. It is a 70 mile long fault. However, they only believe that 10 miles of that fault actually ruptured. Thank goodness. Californians have natural disaster amnesia. You know, when was that earthquake? When did the, what, how, how big was that? When was that fire? It's kind of like, yeah, it's not gonna happen to me. You know, it's been a long time since we've had an earthquake, and a big earthquake in the Los Angeles region. It was really the 1994 earthquake that was the last damaging earthquake in Los Angeles. That was, of course, the largest natural disaster the U.S. had seen up to that point. People begin to forget fairly quickly. We constantly have to remind people that we live in earthquake country, that earthquakes are a threat to life and property, and that they need to be prepared for a major earthquake. The Southern California Earthquake Center is a multi-institutional collaboration of earthquake scientists. The director of the Southern California Earthquake Center is Professor Thomas Jordan. Right. I mentioned last time that when faults break, they propagate like like cracks in glass. Undergraduate studies in earthquake information technology, USIT, it is my favorite SCEC program. Undergraduates come in from all over the country to work in teams to develop earthquake information technology that we can really use. The grand challenge is the project of projects posed by the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Tom Jordan and the interns have eight weeks to solve it. Well, this year's grand challenge uh, focuses on USURF 3, which is a new revolutionary earthquake forecasting model for California that will be the basis for the next national seismic hazard maps and for uh, the future California building code. These interns work on software called SCEC Video, short for SCEC Visual Display of Objects. SCEC Video is an internet-enabled software developed by past USIT interns, and it's constantly developing year after year. It's a software that enables us to create these visualizations that display different faults, earthquake ruptures, we can implement GIS layers to show hazards maps and casualty probabilities. We've got a lot of possibilities. Another branch of the grand challenge that the interns have to tackle is the up and coming 20th anniversary of the magnitude 6.7 Northridge earthquake. So what interns are doing with that is using SCEC video to take an array of many 6.7s that have occurred in the past and develop a sense of the potential hazard that could occur in LA by looking at these different 6.7s. For the 2013 Grand Challenge, the interns split up into four groups. Geographic Information Science, or GIS. Software Development. Visualization Production and a media team whose charge is to document the intern experience. The workflow of the USIT interns pretty much starts with the GIS team. What we do is research different earthquake scenarios, potentially hazardous to main population sites within Southern California. We create these sort of models and we give them to the development team to place into SCEC video. So the development team consists of programmers. So essentially we're the people who actually dive into SCEC video. We make changes, add features. And finally, the production team uses all of the work from the development team, all of the work from the GIS team, and we create the visualizations for our final products. There is no replacement for seeing things in the field. For the 2013 field trip, we traversed the entire 300 kilometer long segment of the Southern San Andreas Fault. Being in the field provides an indispensable experience for students that is completely unobtainable from looking in books or on computer screens. I've never actually seen a fault with my eyes, so I can't wait to see one. Make video! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
After the students get the grand challenge, they begin to realize what's involved. And then they experience what really happens in research. There are problems, there are dead ends. Then they realize, oh my gosh, I only have about a week left. We gotta finish it. What they're doing isn't easy. And Professor Jordan every year says, you may not make it, but you know what? We do. Together in collaboration, the GIS team and the production team have successfully completed the Grand Challenge. Among many things, we created visualizations of Northridge-sized earthquakes, shake maps, and USURF 2 and 3 comparisons. The development team's role for the Grand Challenge was to be able to dynamically display basin depths and VS-30 maps. We were successfully able to display these in Skick Video. They go off and then become our newest, youngest breed of scientists, of computer scientists, engineers, and so forth. People in this profession are going to have to learn to be competent in particular software programs in order to relate not only to the public but to other scientists in other disciplines as well. They want us to succeed and they want to put high expectations so that we can reach those expectations and I think that's what they've done in the past and it's worked. This internship has allowed me to have more hands-on experience in seismology and what better place to do it than SCI. Hopefully one day, you know, all our hard work and the more research that we do might save more lives.